So you've seen the question in the thumbnail. Can you do those? Do you want to know the trick? If you're sitting there thinking, you know what, I can do those sorts of questions, why not give yourself a bit of a challenge? Head over to my website, uh, mathskitchen.com, and have a go at some of the harder examples. You'll find the questions to do with this particular topic are on the tips page, but I'll leave a link down below as well. Right, for the rest of us, this is one of those questions that actually looks a bit harder than it is, I think. But there is a point, even if you're amazing at rearranging formulae and solving equations, where if you don't know this specific technique, you're just going to get stuck, okay? So you need to know it. And it catches people out time and time again when it comes up in exams. So I thought it would be worth having a little explore of it today. Um, so I'm assuming that you have some knowledge of how to work with algebra, uh, in particular expanding and factorizing single brackets and rearranging and solving equations. But I am going to go through all of the questions, so even if that isn't a particular strength of yours, hopefully you should still be able to follow along. So in the example at the start we had vx equals y and then in brackets x add z. And we're asked to make x the subject that means that we need to do a bit of rearranging so that the x is all on its own you know so we have x equals something all right so the idea is we end up with a formula for calculating x using only the other letters involved now the first thing i notice here is that the x appears twice and that one of them is buried inside the bracket um, and if we're trying to get the x on its own it's no use to us if it's stuck inside a set of brackets so it's, i mean it's easy to deal with though all we've got to do first of all is just expand or you know multiply out those brackets and if we do that we get vx equals xy add yz so that's the first thing if the thing you're trying to make the subject is in brackets, expand those brackets. In fact, I'd go further and say that if you're ever stuck trying to solve any algebra problem that involves brackets, it's often going to help to expand those brackets. Um, obviously, it's not the right thing to do in every situation, but if you're at a loss as to what to do next, you've reached a bit of a dead end, you know, give it a go. It may well move you in the right direction. Okay, so now we have no brackets, but the problem we still have is that the x appears twice. So let's first of all at least get them all on their own on the same side of the equation. And we can do that by subtracting xy from both sides. Now we have vx minus xy equals yz. It's definitely an improvement, but our aim is just to get 1x on its own. So how do we do that? Well. Here's a trick, we factorize the left-hand side. Why is that gonna help? Well, because x is the common factor there. Factorizing, don't forget, is when we put things into brackets with the common factors outside the brackets, all right? So we're looking for common factors. That's why it's called factorizing. And in our question, both parts of the equation on that left-hand side have an x in them. So x is the common factor in this example. That means when we factorize this, we will put an x outside the bracket. And by doing that, we are saying we want to multiply everything that's inside the bracket by x. Okay. So we've taken the common factor x in this case out of the equation. And what's left on that left hand side is what will go inside the bracket. So v minus y. And that's that's how you factorize. Okay. And that's what you need to do with these kinds of questions. And the genius of it is that you know, now we only have one X. So by factorizing like that, we've got it down to just one X and it's outside the bracket. The final step is that we divide both sides by whatever X is being multiplied by, i.e. you know, what's in that bracket. In this case, it's V minus Y. So on the left hand side, that will have the effect of canceling them out. And on the right hand side, we can just write that as a fraction, YZ over V minus Y. What I love about this is that we're taking one of those algebra skills that you've been taught factorizing, and we're actually using it to help us to solve a problem, not just you know doing it for the sake of it. And that's the point of really having all these mathematical skills is to be able to solve maths problems. Um, before I go on to the next example, I am very, very excited to announce that my website is now live. I mentioned it earlier, I know. Um, but we've put in a huge amount of work over the last few months, and it is, I think, uh, a brilliant site to help you get ready for your exams. It's all completely free, and we've put loads of GCSE exam-style questions up there for you to practice. You can search for them by topic, or you can complete a past paper, 
or you can do a short assessment. It's, it's all completely interactive, so you type in your answer and it's marked instantly, so you can see if you've got it right. Uh, and there are model answers for everything if you're stuck. And as if that wasn't enough, there's a section for each of these videos that I'm doing now. So if you want to go and practice this particular skill that we'll look at today, rearranging formulae, you can do that. Just go to the tips page and you'll see the link next to the thumbnail of this video. I'll, I'll also leave a link down below as well, of course. OK, let's get back to this. I'm going to look at two more examples. The next one is one that I know catches people out all the time. E equals 2 plus 3A over A. You can see it there. And what's the problem with it? It's got a fraction in it and not just any fraction. It has an algebraic fraction. You know, we've got letters involved. And the bit that we're trying to make the subject is mixed up in that fraction. But don't panic. It, it really follows more or less the same pattern as the last one that we did, but with an additional step. One way of describing what's going on on the right hand side there is that we have 2 add 3a divided by a. A fraction is just division really. Now the first thing we want to do then is to get a out from under that fraction. We don't want to be dividing by it. And this is actually really simple. All we do is multiply both sides by a. That will have the effect of undoing that division. So now we have ae equals 2 plus 3a. And we're back on solid ground, really very similar to the last example. So let's get all the bits that include an A together on one side. So we could subtract 3A from the right hand side to give us AE minus 3A equals 2. And then the clever bit, we factorize. A is obviously the common factor there. So that goes outside the bracket. And whatever is left when we take that out is what goes inside. Okay, So in this example, E minus 3. Now we have a, and in brackets, e minus 3 equals 2. The final step, as before, is to divide both sides by whatever is in the bracket, in this case, e minus 3. And we finished a equals 2 over e minus 3. OK, I'm going to do one last example, but before I do a quick recap, if you want to get rid of a fraction, then you multiply both sides by the denominator, the number at the bottom of that fraction. And if the thing that you are trying to make the subject is at the bottom of a fraction, then you will definitely want to do that. And what you are looking to do with these is to get all the bits containing that letter on the same side of the equation. Then you factorize, then you divide. OK, here's the last one. Pause the video, have a go yourself before I go through it in a couple of seconds. Make x the subject of y equals x over x minus b. OK, we have a fraction again. And the thing we're trying to make the subject, the x, is in the denominator of that fraction. So first thing, let's multiply by x minus b. Now we have y and x minus b in brackets equals x. Now, we have some brackets, and the bit that we want is inside the brackets. But it's not a problem. We'll just expand those brackets. And now we have yx minus yb equals x. OK, we're getting there. Next, we need to get all the x's all together on the same side. So let's subtract x from both sides. That means we no longer have an x on the right hand side. In fact, it leaves nothing on the right hand side. That's OK, though. It's fine to have that. We just put a 0 there. So you can see now we have yx minus yb minus x equals 0. And we only want x's on that left hand side. We don't want that minus yb. So all we do is add yb to both sides. So now we have yx minus x equals yb. We will factorize to give x brackets y minus 1 equals yb. And then divide both sides by y minus 1 to give x equals yb over y minus 1. That is it for this week. I hope you found it useful. Don't forget to keep practicing. And as I mentioned, actually, I've mentioned it twice now, go and check out the website, mathskitchen.com. It's all free. There's loads of useful stuff for you to practice there. It's all there to help you get through your exams. Thank you very much indeed for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next week.